All right, boys. Welcome in. Uh, today we're going to be covering bombing in air sim, uh, specifically for prop tiers. A lot of these techniques will be useful in uh, top tiers as well. Uh, but we've seen some posts on the Reddit uh, about you know people being fans of like big four-engine bombers such as this, uh, but not really being able to play them uh, practically in you know arcade and RB and whatnot. They're just you know they're kind of liabilities for the team. Something unique about simulation is these things are incredibly powerful. Uh, if you've ever wanted to enjoy something like a B-17, uh, but you just can't quite get it to fit in the environment that you're in, uh, air sim might be for you. I'm going to be showing you guys today how to get involved in that. Uh, very simply, you don't need a joystick, you don't need rudder pedals, you don't need a head tracker. Uh, we're going to show you all that today. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is come up here to my controls, and I'm going to be flying completely mouse and keyboard controls uh, today. So we're going to go into control setup, mouse and keyboard only advanced, and we're going to select that layout. So I'm not going to make any changes to it. You guys can see that I'm flying just the regular way. I'm going to just activate this 10% booster mm, just for the giggles. And now, the next part is going to be finding an air sim lobby. So if you're trying to grind your event, or you're trying to figure out which bomber that you're going to be using for this particular day, uh, you want to go up to events and tournaments. And once you're in events and tournaments, click on Air Simulator Battles. And then down in here, open up the room list. Now from the room list, just go ahead and ignore all this for now. You want to go to Create Session. We're not actually going to create one. We just want to find out what the BR ranges are for the day. Uh, the BRs change on a uh, regular basis. So sometimes it'll be 4.0 to 5.0, sometimes it'll be 3.3 to 4.3. Today it's 3.7 to 4.7, we got 5.0 to 6.0, we got 2.3 to 3.3, so we know our top BR for EC3 is 4.7. So we're going to try to find a mission that fits this uh, 4.7 range. So we're not actually going to create this lobby, we just wanted to find that number easily. Um, right here, only available, uh, will mask all the other rooms. I live in Alaska, so it really doesn't matter to me which server I play on. Uh, so sometimes you could turn those other servers off and you can uncheck this only available and you'll see all the simulator lobbies that are currently open. But once you've uh, found something, you know, like here's Dover Strait, here's Port Moresby, here's Denmark, um, you know, you can try to figure out like, all right, uh, here's all the countries that are available and the map and whatnot and how much how much time has been running in the game is right up here in the top right. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab, not Denmark. Denmark's a bit too large of a map. I'm going to see if there's any other 4.7s that are, maybe I can flip to another team. So here's 4.7 Stalingrad, and there's room on the Russian team. And that mission's almost over, so let's check out, there's Dover Street. It's a bit too big of a map for what we're trying to do today. Uh, let me see. Here's 6.0 bulge. I might be able to do some bulge. Let me close out these everybody versus everybody. Here's a 6.0 Kursk. It's got time in it. Here's 6.0 Ruhr. And there's room on the German side. Alright, so we're going to go over and see if we can find a nice 6.0-ish German bomber. So we've got like our DO217 M1. We gotta we gotta spade this thing out. So I'm just gonna grab a different preset down here. And we'll grab our DO217 M1. We'll toss it on the lineup. And we'll go back to it. We got this uh, we got our lineup all set up the way that we want. We got our bomber that we're gonna be using today. Back to the room list, only available, and here's our 6.0 Kursk with one V2. Uh, we're going to be joining the, oh wait, no, it's the Ruhr. It's the Ruhr one that, that we're looking for. It's an hour in. we got lots of room on the German side. We're going to go ahead and join those Germans. And that's how you want to join simulator lobbies. You never want to use the queue. You want to manually select your own lobbies based on population, based on map, based on time remaining, uh, any other factors that are important to you so you can kind of tailor your experience. Now, once we get in here, we're going to want to look at where these little mini bases are, right? So here's a little mini base uh, right down here in the south. Another one probably got destroyed maybe up here in this area. But these things, once they're destroyed, they will respawn in. 
Um, and since we're going to go for this one in the south, what we're going to do is we're going to depart uh, a bit more to the north. And we're going to kind of make a little bit of a flight plan. The riskiest phase of our flight is going to be the initial climb. So instead of departing here and flying straight to this base, or departing here and flying straight for this base, and, you know, getting pretty easily intercepted, what we're going to do is we're going to pick this base, and we're going to fly south doing our initial climb over these friendly anti-aircraft batteries. We're going to pick our uh, bomb load here. Uh, two uh, 50 kilogram bombs times eight is pretty good for taking out bases. And we've got our fuel, and we're all good to go. So we're going to click this and spawn in our DO-217. Now again, we're on mouse and keyboard controls. I do have head tracker running, but I'm going to go ahead and disable that now so you guys can see that you can do all this even without a head tracker. Start up my engines here. And another thing you might want to be doing is under options, under air battle settings, uh, camera from aircraft gunner sight. If you flip that to no, even if your gunner has first person views, you'll always have a third person view camera. So when we switch to our gunners, we're going to be using those a lot today. That'll be very helpful. Um, big thing about taking off in sim is there's going to be a lot of uh, P factor. There's going to be a lot of torque on the aircraft when you initially throttle up. And if you don't do anything, if I just if I just press shift and accelerate up, my plane might fly off to one side of the runway or the other. You're just going to be correcting that with a bit of rudder. You can see how I'm drifting off to the left. I'm just going to use the E key here. And just tap on that a little bit keep my nose pointed more confidently down the runway there. And then we're going to go ahead and put on some takeoff flaps and rotate. We've got a positive rate of climb. Our gear is coming up. And we're going to go ahead and retract the flaps. And we are flying. Now we're going to be making our left hand turn to the south to stay over these friendly airfields. We want to try to avoid these A points. That's where a lot of fighters are going to be. Watching our, uh, watching the temperatures on our engines here. So we're going to go ahead and come out of web. We've got a successful takeoff. We're going to bring that throttle back a little bit just to control those thermals on the engines. Make that left hand turn out so that we're going southbound and roll out on this new heading. Now the reason we want to stay near the airfields is not only will they provide us with some anti-aircraft and fighter protection, and uh, enemy fighters aren't as likely to be in this area, uh, but also if any fighters do appear in this area, these airfields will start flashing. If you ever see the airfields flashing yellow, that means that the anti-aircraft batteries are engaging a target, and it'll kind of alert you to the fact that you need to start being a little bit wary. And on that note, what we're going to be doing is switching to and from our gunner views and just looking around. So even though you're restricted to first person view in the cockpit, you might not be able to see very much of what's going on around you depending on which aircraft you're flying. If you switch to your third person gunners, you can see everything that's going around really easily. Now, one big thing about using the third person gunners is if you ever switch to them and they're looking directly to the rear like that, your centers, your cursor is nice and centered up here, and uh, you know they're, they're looking straight back. That means that they don't see a threat. But if you ever switch to your gunners and they're looking another way, like if they're looking up there or they're looking over there or they're looking over that that way, even if you don't see a threat, that means there's a threat in that direction. So, all right, we're coming up on our first friendly airfield right there. I don't know why my plane is jittering so much. I don't know if that's lag or what. I don't have very much lag. It's fine. We're going to make a slight left turn turn to get to this next airfield here. And we've already picked up 3,000 feet of altitude in our initial climb. And we want to do this over these friendly airfields where this AA is protecting us because we're only going 135 knots. If you're in a prop bomber, you typically want to climb anywhere between 130 to 160 knots. If you're going slower than 130, then you're really going to be struggling to get enough lift under the wings. You're going to start getting those wingtip vortices, those those white contrails that, you know, sort of drag off the end of your wingtip there. That's a sure sign that you are very nearly entering a stall. So you want to try to keep your speed above 130, but you want to keep it below 160. Now, if you're going 130 to 160 knots, you're really easy to catch. I've 
fighter that's going 230 knots is going almost twice your speed. So I'll be able to catch up to you really easily. That's what makes this initial climbing portion so risky, and that's why we want to do it over these airfields. Because once we've got some good altitude under our belt, that's when we can level off and start making the bomber go much, much, much faster. And if you start to get below 130 knots, you can just bring your mouse cursor down and reduce your rate of climb, and then your airspeed will start accelerating. And if you start getting faster than 160 knots, that means you just need to lift your mouse cursor up, and your speed will start going back down, and you'll be using that uh, the extra energy for climb. And that's what we want to do. We're basically in our VY climb. It's like our best rate of climb. It's the most altitude that we can get in the least amount of time. And that's where our goal is. What we're shooting for is somewhere around 10,000 feet or so, or 3,000 meters. And we're coming up on our third airfield here. We did not get intercepted. None of these airfields are flashing. I'm checking my gunners. My gunners don't detect any threats. I'm looking around with my Mark I eyeballs. I don't see anybody trying to vulture me or anything like that. I don't see any threats coming in. There's a bit of a fight going on over there. You can see some people dogfighting over there in the distance. You got a guy with red smoke. You got a little bit of a ground battle. There's a bandit right over there. But they're so far away. They're way over here. So we're safe. We're coming up on 6,000 feet. We're coming up on our third airfield. Once we get to this third airfield, we're going to make a turn westbound and start heading towards our mini base target. Check those gunners one more time. Check those airfields. Make sure they're not flashing. Here's our friendly airfield right there, our last little waypoint on the flight plan, and we're good to go. So we're at 7,000 feet, not quite 10,000 feet, but we're close enough. I'm just going to start a nice, gentle right-hand turn by just dragging my mouse cursor slightly over to the right. In simplified mouse mode uh, flying, the plane will do a pretty good job of staying level. It'll, uh, it'll do your turns, but it won't get upside down. But if you do want to go upside down, you can just use W, A, S, and D and you can, uh, you know, perform maneuvers and force the aircraft into positions that the simplified mouse doesn't want it to be in. But even if you let go of the keys, the plane will just return back to that nice flying portion for you. Uh, nice and level, nice and stable. And that's really useful when you're trying to use your gunners and you're trying to avoid fire. You can have your right hand on the mouse and you can use your left hand doing W, A, S, and D to kind of evade use some elevator, use some rudder, and you'll have a nice stabilized firing solution on the enemy, even though you're offering them a very, very difficult target. Uh, you will bleed some energy. You can see we, we lost a lot of altitude when we did that, so you don't want to do it all the time, but if somebody's firing, you know, 20 millimeter rounds at you, you definitely want to try to evade as much as possible. Uh, and we got a little bit of smoke down there from somebody, probably a friendly returning but I don't see any airfields flashing, and I'm checking my gunners, and my gunners are good. So if those were enemies right there, even though I can see them, if my gunners were looking at them, I might have something to be concerned about, but fairly certain that those are just two airfield defenders guarding this airfield, and that's another big reason that you want to try to climb near airfields. So we're trying to make our westbound turn here. We're almost done with the turn. We've got about 20 more degrees to go. We're gonna, now that we're starting to head towards the enemy side of the map, once you start heading towards this red-blue line here, and you start getting away from your airfields, that's when you want to reduce that rate of climb. So we're going to go ahead and roll out of our turn, because we're basically going westbound now. We're going to bring our nose down so that we can bring our speed up. And if your aircraft comes with a VSI, or Vertical Speed Indicator, which is this instrument right here, what we're going to be looking for is getting this needle below five but above zero. Somewhere in this range is pretty good. You know, one to two meters per second is a decent rate of climb. It'll allow you to go pretty fast, but continue to gain some altitude. So we're going to drag our mouse cursor down just a little bit more and see if we can get that VSI to dip down below five. dead zone when when you see the mouse cursor go from lighted up to the blackened out like that you are in the dead zone so you have neutral inputs and we're still climbing more than more than five so we're just dip our mouse cursor down just a little bit start putting in just a little bit of negative elevator 
you can see that that VSI right there we're starting to get that this is about a thousand feet per minute if you guys are using uh, American instruments or five meters per second if you're using uh, metric instruments so we're gonna drag our cursor down just a little bit more all right there we go now we're starting to get our needle more in that range and you can see our airspeed is going up correspondingly and at this point now we got a little bit more altitude we got a little bit more airspeed I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more throttle to the engines because we're in colder air we're going faster we're getting more cooling through the engine so we might be able to do better than 96 percent we can pick up just a little bit more airspeed and we're about halfway to the target we're gonna be switching to the gunners gunners are looking straight back we're good to go and even though they're looking straight back, we still want to go ahead and just scan ahead, see if there's anybody up here, maybe like a P-38 or something like that that's sitting a couple thousand feet above you. And two big commands that you're going to want to be using is T-4 and 2, cover me. If you ever detect an enemy, are we descending now? Let me check my VSI. Yep, we're starting to descend, so we're going to pick that nose back up, bring it back into the neutral. Watch that VSI. Get it right back into that range that, that we're looking for. Nice neutral elevator. We're going like almost 200 knots now. We, we got a good speed on us. Using our gunners. Gunners are looking straight back. We're good to go. Checking above us for any kind of threats that might be diving. And if any enemies get spotted, T, 4, and 2. You don't want to do it too much, but the moment that you see an enemy, you want to let your team know that you do see that enemy. All right. We're getting close to the target. There's a bit of a cloud in our way, but right about down here-ish, there should, there should be a little mini base. So we're gonna correct our heading off to the left. I'm just gonna use the A key and just start steering a little bit around this cloud so we can open up a nice line of sight over here because our mini base is in like a one to two o'clock, not two o'clock now. Now we can start looking down here and seeing if we can find it. I don't think that's it, that might be it. There it is, right there. Sometimes they can be a little bit difficult to spot. Uh, there's different shaped mini bases. Uh, different terrain can make it a little bit difficult. You want to try to find it with your gunners. And then set your nose using just your A and your D keys to get that plane heading right towards that mark. And then go ahead and open up your bomb bay doors. Uh, to open up your bomb bay doors, you can either bind a key for it, but since we're just using regular mouse and keyboard layout, we're just going to tap the bomb key one time, and that'll open up our bomb bay doors. And then we're going to check our gunners, make sure that nobody's around us. We're all good to go. Gunners are looking straight back. And you can look at your map, you can zoom in on your map and just make sure that your heading looks good on the target. Got a little bit of a cloud in our way, so we might have to make another pass. Let's check our gunners one more time all around. Maybe if we approach from this direction over here, we'll get a cleaner pass, but I'm going to switch to my bomb view now, because we might be able to see through this cloud here soon. There it is right there. A little turn on a target, and get our bombs away. Bombs are falling. Just jam the space key a bunch. Six 250 kilograms should be more than enough to get that base down. If you're ever wondering about how many bombs is required to kill any mini base at any EC with any bomb loadout, uh, my good friend Termex, a huge uh, contributor to the War Thunder Sim community, has been spending a ton of time developing this uh, Google document that charts out every single bomb loadout for every single aircraft and then shows you exactly how many to drop in order to kill an entire mini base. Uh, the tab's down here at the bottom, and there's some, some instructions right here on how to use it. I'll put a link to his uh, spreadsheet in the details of the video. We'll find out here in a second. So you can see the bombs there. You can see the mini base right there that we're flying over. That cloud kind of faded from obscuring us just in time for me to see that base and make a little tiny correction with my A key. There go the bombs. Looks like just base damage. Two of the bombs got uh, missed, but the four that hit were plenty to destroy it. That mini base is dead, and we're done. Uh, so we put up uh, we put up 500 score. We got 0.8 tonnage uh, dropped there. You can see how many enemies are in this match, right? We've got an enemy airfield down here, so that's that's an enemy airfield. You can see it's flashing yellow because it's firing at me. So we're gonna turn 
more steeply away from this target. We'll make a more aggressive right hand turn to get away from this thing. Now, a lot of people at this point would start heading directly home and descending. We're not gonna do that, because right right now, here, here's, here's my gunners locking onto enemy threats. You see how they're not looking straight back anymore? They're looking at those targets right there. Those are enemies. Now, I'm pretty sure those are just AI defenders. I'm pretty sure that they're, they're gonna leave us alone. I'm gonna dump my remaining two bombs so that we can get our bomb bay door closed. We're done with our bombing mission. That's all it took. We were able to get some score. Nice, quick, and easy. We're on our way back. We've got two fighters chasing us. So we're gonna go ahead and call for cover. T42. And now that we've called for cover, we're also gonna open up the map and say attention to the map, the direction that those enemies are. So people can see the shield and people can see the direction where the enemies are. And in the chat, they'll be able to see your altitude and your grid square as well. You wanna communicate those threats to your team as much as you can. Let your fighters know where some food is at. I do believe those fighters are peeling off of us. They're returning back to their airfield. But the enemies, when that airfield flashed yellow, all the enemies know we are down here. Now they're probably gonna go up here to this A point. Got a new air superiority objective up here. So we got a nice, good, clean shot to go back to the base. There's an enemy in this area. You can see my airfield's flashing yellow. So somebody is out there. So again, getting back to returning back home. You know, a lot of people would start descending right now. We're not going to do that. We don't want to open ourselves up to premature attack. You know, if you, if you start lowering your altitude, you just make it easier for the enemies to find you. We're going to stay high. We're going to stay fast. We'll do our descent at the end once we're actually in the safety of our uh, airfields. So we're just going to head back pretty much nice and level, going nice and fast, checking our gunners, checking our maps, checking our heading. I think we're going to land over here at this airbase. Looking around with the gunners, making sure nobody is uh, high altitude coming down on me or trying to stalk me or coming up below me. Keep switching to the gunners. Gunners are looking straight back. We're good to go. Now, one thing about... You might wonder why I didn't drop those other two bombs on any other targets. Like, I could have gone up here and dropped them on these targets. You only get so much experience and... You only get so much Silver Lions per 15 minute segment. You can highlight over your card here, and every aircraft has a different value. This particular aircraft, down there at the bottom of the card, it says uh, max reward for useful actions, 1,815 Silver Lions per minute. Those come in 15 minute chunks. And once you've done something useful, like killing an enemy, killing a mini base, or shooting down you know, the bombers, or whatever, uh, you're pretty much done until that 15-minute that window ticks over. You're going to see that happen. It'll say useful actions in your screen, and it'll tell you what you got paid for that little 15-minute chunk of time, and it'll reset the timer. So once you've dropped one set of bombs and you've killed one mini base, you're good to go. You can keep flying on the enemy side if you want. You can keep bombing stuff if you want, but you're really just opening yourself up to risk with no extra potential reward. So in order to avoid that, we're just going to jettison our remaining bombs, close our bomb bay doors so that we can stay nice and fast, and uh, start heading back home. We're getting close to home. My airfields are not flashing. I don't see any yellow. This one was flashing earlier, so there might be an enemy out there. I'm just going to keep switching to my gunners. Switch to my gunners. They're nice and facing to the rear. We're going to look around ahead of us, see if we can see that enemy that was up here earlier. And then once we get here, we're going to go ahead and go T4... Somebody, oh, cover me. whoops. Alright, did not move it. T4-3 for, for leading for landing. We're going to let our... So if somebody sees a bomber up here and they're like, Oh my gosh, somebody's coming to bomb our airfield. They'll be able to see that uh, you are a friendly. Because, you know, when you stay high and fast and you're heading towards the enemy airfield or you're heading towards friendly airfields, you look like an enemy bomber. You don't want any of your friendly fighters to come up here and waste their time investigating you. So we are going to announce our position that we're leading for landing so that they get the grid square that, that we're in and they know that we're at G6 and we're landing. So if they see a bomber there in that G6 area, that's the airfield we're landing on. We're good to go. Gunners are good to go. Airfields aren't flashing. We're going to go ahead and hold control to zero out our throttle. So we've got uh, no throttle there. We're going to dip our nose down. We're going to let this descent start happening. Got a nice idle throttle. And we're just going to orbit over that airfield 
until we come back and land. Again, we're waiting for that 15 minute useful action window, so there's really no rush here. You don't have to like, it's not like Air RB or Arcade where like time is of the essence. It's a lot more chill. You can just kind of relax and just sort of take it at your own pace. You want to watch your speed in the descent. You know, I, I don't have all the speeds uh, memorized for every single aircraft, but they will turn red before you win them. So if you notice your speed turning red, just lift your mouse cursor up a little bit to help keep from gaining any excess airspeed. But we're going to descend as quickly as we can, so I'm going to drag that mouse back down. You can see our VSI has just plummeted all the way at negative 15 meters per second. It can't even measure a descent rate faster than that. It's very easy to descend in these bombers. And we're just going to make right hand turns over this airfield. Just using my, my D key here to kind of lean the aircraft off to the right so we can circle around this airfield. We can keep checking this airfield to see if it's flashing. We can keep checking our gunners to see if there's any threats near us. And once we get down to lower altitudes, we'll start setting up for landing. So our 280 knots, we really don't want to touch our flaps just yet. Holding the C key and just looking off to the right, finding that airfield over there, checking it one more time to see if it's flashing. It's not. We're gonna check our gunners one more time to see if they're focused. They are not. The enemy is captured the zone. There we go. We're gonna get set up for landing on that little airfield right there. So we're gonna use this turn to bleed all this speed that we got and dive. Make a hard right hand turn here and pull back nice and easy with that mouse cursor kill all that airspeed. Use that A key to roll the wings level again. And now we can start coming in, start pumping our flaps. So if I had combat flaps, I'd deploy them, but all we have is takeoff. So we're just gonna go takeoff, raised, takeoff, raised, takeoff, raised. And those little bumps of flaps are gonna help kill some of that speed. Now we're down below like 180 knots. We can leave our takeoff flaps in place. We can bring our gear down at about 160 knots. We're going to bring our final stage of flaps down at about 130 knots. We can start adding in some power. Once you get that last stage of flaps down, you're going to want to put a little bit more power on the engines to keep them stalling out. Line up with your runway. And then just set a nice glide path angle here. We're just looking for a nice steady rate of descent. And we're going to try to keep our speed at about 100 knots. You get slower than 100 knots, just add a little bit of throttle. You get faster than 100 knots, just remove a little bit of throttle. I want to come in at a nice 100 knot. Add a little bit more throttle there. You just start picking the nose up right here as you're crossing the threshold. And go for a nice smooth touchdown. Hold control. Pick the nose up. A little bit of a bounce, no big deal. Your landings don't have to be perfect. And then just continue holding control. Get those brakes down. Once we make a full stop here, it'll give us the rearm and repair in 12 seconds. We can check one more time. The airfield's not flashing. We're good to go. And we took out a mini base. Didn't even get engaged by enemy fighters. And we're back home. And if you wanted to leave now, uh, after you get rearmed and repaired, you're good to go. You do not have to stay around. We won't get our full rewards until this match ends because War Thunder needs to determine if our team won or lost. But this is the nice thing about Sim. Uh, you do not have to stay for the entire time. If you leave your team early, it just opens up more slots for other players to join. So at this point, we can just return back to Hangar and we're done. And we won't see what the actual rewards are until that match ends. So I could log out right now. These are my preliminary results since the battle is still in progress. So we were able to pick up about 6,000 RP, about 22,000 Silver Lions, and that was it. Regular mouse and keyboard flying, nice little bomber, and we're done. And we'll get more rewards when that match ends. And that's all there is to it. Alright, so I was editing the video, and the match that we were in ended. And you can see now we are getting our full rewards for that match. Uh, we got 2,887 RP for the DO-217. Uh, we researched a module and we got enough RP left over to get uh, a whole nother module and plus partial of another one. And we did all that by bombing one minibase. 
And uh, once I process that, I should be able to come here and you can see that we were defeated in that air simulation battle. We took off one time and we did one useful action by bombing one mini base. And this is, uh, this is what we ended up getting for it in RP. And this is what we ended up getting for it in SL. And uh, that's for a loss.